We haven't done a lot with Darlene Tanner, and uh, part of that is because there's been like attempted assassinations of a president and lot, lots of news at the moment, but I've been promising you it's always been in the... And it's quite good to talk about it tonight properly, actually, because uh, they've released the summary of the report. Mm-hmm. So now we can actually not just go, oh, I wonder what it's going to say, because we we sort of know. But, so let's first of all just have a look at the story of 3 News tonight. The investigation into embattled MP Darlene Tana found she more than li- more likely than not knew of migrant exploitation allegations against her husband's now closed bike business. The Green Party's released a 12-page summary of the investigation, which raised concerns about the lengthy and often unclear explanations Tana offered during the process. Here's Jenna Lynch again. Bikes and beyond going bust. The business at the centre of migrant exploitation allegations all shut up. A closed sign hung in the window with contact details for an insolvency firm. Its owner, Christian Hoff Nielsen, pictured here in March, was nowhere to be found today with reports he's bailed to Europe. I don't know nothing. Sources have told us embattled MP Darlene Tana was at Parliament today with her belongings due to be moved out of her Green Party office as a 12-page summary of the Greens' investigation into her involvement in her husband's business was released. I'm glad to be in a position now to release that report so that New Zealanders know what it is that we've been dealing with. It's understood Tana had been preventing the release of the report, which was leaked to staff last week. The investigation concludes Tana more likely than not was aware of the allegations and had operational involvement in the business, something Tana disputes. Do you stand by what you've said about Darlene Tana, that effectively she's a liar? Yeah, for all intents and purposes, I've made it really clear that she misled, it is mine and Matama's strong view, that she misled myself and Matama, and in normal person's language, that would be the equivalent of lying. You got anything you want to say about that, too? I heard noises. That is a very strong statement with absolutely no um, political cushioning of it. They, Chloe's pissed. Yeah, that that um basically, she said, yes, she's a liar. That's what normal speak. Normal people speak for politicians. Yes, she's a liar. Yeah. Um, all right. We'll keep on going. You can see that. I think she's got, we've, we've managed to pause it on her. I'm still pissed face as well. Tana is refusing to tell the Greens whether or not she intends to remain in Parliament as an independent MP. She told us she was not in a position to talk plans at this stage. We are still yet to, not only the Green Party, but the public of this country have a clear, straight up answer from Darlene Tana about her intentions to stay within Parliament or not. We need to know an answer to that question before we move on. The next step she's referring to is the Greens deciding whether or not to use the waka jumping law to keep yeah, her out they of won't. Parliament. Are you going to waka jump Darlene Tana out? We don't have plans to do that at this point in time. The acting Prime Minister says don't do it. The only people who should be able to drive an elected... Just a little side note. How how the, the sick in the back of your throat when you hear acting Prime Minister, is is it the same for everybody else? Just a little bit in the in the back of the throat there? Just, mm. Or is it just me? No? Just me? Mm, okay. Member of Parliament, out of Parliament, is the voters at an election. First port of call is to make it clear as whether Darlene intends to try and retain that seat that was won by the Green Party at this most recent election. Uh, and if she decides to try and do that, then of course we'll move on to next steps. Darlene Tana wouldn't do an interview today, but thanked us for our patience while she is, quote, navigating the terrain. Oh, Jenna, this saga is certainly dragging on. What happens next? We'll have a listen in because Jenna adds a bit more I to this as well. I have just received a text from Darlene Tanner in the last uh, little while. Can I just suggest, there's the, actually so much I want to talk about for this presentation from three years. I'm actually trying to hold my tongue. But, you know, the uh, the <laughs> Apple pods in the air the, does kind of start to show the uh, the budget is a lot mm. less than when it was News Hub. I'll, there's a couple of other things I want to share, but we'll get through the story first of all. While responding to Chloe Swarbrick's statement there about her lying, she has said that she's disappointed by Chloe's comments, that calling her a liar is unprofessional and also, in her view, not reflective of the findings of the report. Still no word from her on whether she intends to stay or go. Now, Darlene Tana has been absent from the Parliament for 124 days. She has been sitting on that report for weeks, so it is not a credible excuse for her to say she has not had 
had enough time to consider her future. When MPs return to this House on Tuesday, the expectation is either Darlene Tana shows up or at least communicates to the party, the public, uh, what her intentions are. Now, if she decides to stay in fight, the Green Party has some major soul-searching to do as to whether it will invoke that bumper-jumping legislation to get her out this of is, This is not that a problem. Legislation it, it called an anti-democratic dead rat. Yeah, that's exactly why they won't. they won't do that. They won't invoke it. Mm. They're, they're one of the parties that's most sort of anti it. Now, um, before, we, uh, before we go on, uh, One News wrote an article about it, which gives a bit more details. Um, so, because we've just heard that Darlene Tanner was, quote, uh, more likely than not, end quote, um, involved in the business. One News says, the executive summary of the report by barrister Rachel Burt pointed out the couple were effectively co-founders of the business after buying the existing small-scale business. Darling described herself as a founder of the business in her CV provided to the Green Party 2022 and talked about the e-bike business as being her business in her candidate profile, Burt's in the report. Because of course she would. Because it's a green um, qualification, isn't it, that I work in the e-cycle world. It's going to make her look more, uh, her pedigree look more green. Uh, while in her interviews with me, Darlene said from the outset the business was Christian's business. I find she was integrally involved from the early days as it developed into a much larger business stretched across multiple stores. Um, I find she became a... I find she became a 50-50 or 50% shareholder and director in recognition of her contribution to the business and that over these years of 2014 to 2019, the business was a family business with Christian, Christian and Darlene heavily involved in all aspects of the business. Bert's investigation also concluded Dana, Tana, sorry, worked both front of house with customers, assisting with basic repairs and sales, and undertook the more back office functions, such as payroll contracts, liaison with suppliers and accounts. Uh, and then there's a title that says Captain Chaos. Last little bit. Uh, the report noted Tana called her partner Captain Chaos for his inability to structure the operation and that she brought her planning and implementation skills to bear and created effective systems for the business. So you couldn't be much more involved than the systems I create the business will use. It concludes that Tana would have been aware of the employee circumstances and complaints, quote, as she still had some operational involvement in the business. So there's a lot more detail on the uh, the quote that TV3 shared, which was more likely than not. So yeah, I mean, that's, I, I think it's fair to say that's what the report has reported. So we can, we can say that. And um, my, my gut tells me the reason that uh, Dave, David Seymour, that's right. Eh? David, I was thinking Daniel, David Seymour said, Oh no, 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 you don't want her to be, to be is because it's an embarrassment for the Greens and will continue to be. However, yeah, yeah. Here's the here's the kicker. If the business has just gone bankrupt, she ain't going anywhere. If for nothing else, the salary. Like honestly, if you if your partner's business has just gone bankrupt, you got no money. She's not going anywhere. She's not going. Yeah, anywhere. I look. I I think someone that's that's willing to rip off migrant workers and ignore <laughs> um, work visa stuff and that sort of thing to to expect her to suddenly get uh, an attack of the integrities. And go, mm, can't take taxpayers' money and just sit sit in here for the next couple of years. Um, it's not gonna happen. She's gonna she's gonna sit there. I I disagree that it is going to hurt the Greens. Okay. Um, I I think that they have done the right thing at every step here. And I think as we saw with Chloe, they're they're not being shy about calling it as they see it. Yeah. They are putting this all on her, and they have given the time. They have, you know, they deflected everything while this report was taking as long as it did, and then they've released what they can when they could. Um, the reason that we can't read the whole report is because it's a breach of privacy. That she, you know, Tana's got to sign off on on releasing it. That's well, she not the green yes. stopping that. Yeah, she said yes when she was talking to Mikey Sherman, uh, I think two nights ago. Um, but obviously she said yes, but she hasn't actually officially done what she needs to do. Yeah, because she's so. a liar. <laughs> you know, I I, th I think the, 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 the only criticism here that I can really say about the Greens, and the, this is a, a, 
uh, up to any political party, and we've seen so many examples of it, is political parties' vetting processes are not good enough. Yeah. Yep, we see that as well today, and it's not a story we're covering because, to be honest, uh, there's there's other real news going on about the uh, uh, Manurewa um, potential MP from the National Party um, ripping off someone for $150,000. Uh, didn't didn't get into parliament, so it's sort of a bad look vetting system, but it doesn't really impact anything. And uh, you know, to to be fair, if it was a slow night, we'd probably cover it. It's not a slow night, so yeah. If it's a slow night tomorrow, we might talk about it, but not now. Mm-hmm.